When you want to know more, it's smart to watch News 15. Live from Fort Wayne, News 15 Nightbeat with Liz Berry, Ken Owen, Maureen Ty, and Jay Higgins. Good evening to you. More questions are being raised tonight about President Reagan's role in the secret arms deals with Iran. The New York Times and Los Angeles Times are both reporting that in testimony from his hospital bed yesterday, former National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane told the Tower Commission that President Reagan approved an arms shipment to Iran in advance. And that contradicts the president. McFarlane also reportedly told the commission that he wrote a document which would allow Reagan to deny his early involvement in the deal. The Tower Commission will issue its final report on the arms sale next week. President Reagan was asked today if he's worried about what that report might contain. He had a one-word response, no. A White House spokesman says the president had nothing to do with a cover-up. Here in town, the man known as the West Central Rapist tried to plead guilty today, but a judge threw out his plea and ordered him to stand trial. 24-year-old Larry Taylor Jr. is accused of raping a half dozen women in the West Central neighborhood. This morning, he went to court to plead guilty in an agreement that called for a 45-year prison term. But a judge rejected the plea because Taylor could not remember details of one of the rapes he was admitting to. The case is now set for trial May 1st. Taylor could face up to 200 years in prison if convicted on all counts. And when Nightbeat continues, we'll show you a new kind of disposable camera. And later on, we'll meet a dope-sniffing pig. How does it feel to be Germany's most famous pig? A third party has moved into violence-torn Muslim West Beirut in an attempt to stop the fighting there. Syrian tanks and troops have moved into the streets at the request of Lebanese leaders. Six days of fighting between the rival Muslim factions has left more than 200 people dead. If you could start college over again, what would you do differently? That's tonight's talkback question. Here's your response. Get a good base to start from. Okay, Ken, what would you do differently? That's a tricky question, but you know, I really enjoyed my college years. There's nothing I really would change significantly, except maybe I would have spent a few fewer nights on the radio station floor, <laughs> sleeping at night. Sleeping at night, huh? college radio station, I was always too snoring much work, away the hours. Too much work. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would change anything either. College were the four happiest years of my life. I and think really I'd keep the them the way they were. Mm -hmm. Well, next week, our Talkback crew is going to be visiting area high schools. Monday we'll be at Northrop where we'll ask students the question, if you could start high school over, what would you do differently? Now that's a different question. That's okay, we'll get your answer to that <laughs> okay. next week. Coming up, a good reason to pretend you're happy, even if you're not. And a weather forecast that should make you pretty happy. Maureen Ty has it coming up next. Use it and lose it. That's what two camera giants are hoping you'll do with their new products. Kodak and Fuji are now marketing disposable cameras. Cameras you just use once and then pitch a -roo. Fuji calls its model the Quick Snap. It runs for about $10, and Kodak's version is called the Fling. It goes for about $7. Now, why would you want a camera like this? Both companies say they're for people who need a camera quick and don't have one handy. <laughs> I don't Sounds even want to comment on that. pretty wasteful to me. It does, but uh, you know, this is the time of year we usually want to have a disposable forecast because uh, the weather outside is so lousy, but it's so beautiful outside. It really is. I th we've been knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> knock on oh, your watch head. it. <laughs> we we, uh, we have been very lucky, and we're looking forward to a pretty good weekend. We're going to see some sunshine and some relatively mild temperatures. So. No complaints allowed as we head into the last week of February. It's looking good. Looking outside right now, we do have, feels more like the end of March than the end of February. You won't get any complaints from me. Have a good weekend, Maury. You know, everybody wants to feel good. Tonight, Dr. Dina Dell has some advice that could help brighten your days. It seems your facial expressions and body posture have a big effect on the way you feel. <laughs> 